Hey there, I'm Alan Furstenberg. And I'm Mark Tucker. Welcome to Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. How's it been going, Mark? Hey, busy. <laughs> B- busy good. I, I totally know what you mean by busy. It has been an absolute crazy week here, and I am all over the place. Yeah, we mentioned it, I think, uh, recently that I've got some things that are coming to a close, and and some of those have happened, so I, I kind of feel like I've got a few less uh, um, things on my plate. Um, so so it's good, but you know, new things are coming. And, always and that's good always too. something new, yeah. So, you know, um, you had a, a, a tweet the other day about um, the, 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 what is it, the, the skill review policy for, for Alexa, yeah. new Alexa skills. Yeah, and, I think it's officially called policy testing guidelines. Okay, yeah. And it was, uh, it's interesting, you know, there, I see a lot of people complaining about them all the time, you know, you know. I submitted my skill and the skill review team said it was bad for this reason. And I don't understand why, or, you know, um, and I saw the same thing with actions, you know, the action review team rejected it and they didn't explain why. Um, And these sorts of things, you know, come up all the time. And I, you know, to be fair, also used to see them all the time with people who submitted apps to the, the Google play store and the Apple app store. Um, So, you know, maybe maybe it's time we review some of these policies. <laughs> yeah, we can we can definitely do that. So, um, the time to review these policies is before you start a project. Yes, um, that's an excellent be- point. <laughs> because some of the things that you might want to do might be expressly prohibited, and there's no way that it's going to get through certification. Um, and so. It's good to you know read these and reread them. Sometimes they're updated. Um, it's been a, a little while since I've done. I had some recent questions on on uh, some some different things, and so I had to go back and find it. Um, and so, just it's, it's probably good just to to review some of the things and talk mm-hmm. about them. And some of them are obvious if you think about them for you know a couple of seconds, and others, it's not always clear why they're prohibiting something or why they've limited the scope of something and that can feel very frustrating but there's usually a reason yeah and i would think that most of the time if you think about it the reason will go back to some sort of uh legal or financial liability um and on amazon's part to be clear on amazon's part yeah and you know we're talking specifically about alexa but like you said before whether you're doing mobile apps or or other other things, there's going to be uh, guidelines similar or, you know, kind of parallel to these. Um, But even if you're writing your own custom assistant or doing something, then these are still types of things, things that you might want to consider. Uh, They might kind of shed some new light on some liability that you might be opening yourself up to. Uh, so, yep. so it's good to, good to, to know these and kind of just think about them and how they apply to your situation. Yep. So we'll post the link to the page in the show notes, but why don't we kind of go through the rules? You know, broadly speaking, there's 14 or so rules, give or take. Yeah. And these are some like are general guidelines. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Some of them are, are general guidelines. Um, but then there's also in other situations, like if I was going to do a, HIPAA compliant skill, then there's another list that would be more specific um, and have additional restrictions or exclusions and uh, and things. So this isn't the one and only policy guideline. This is the main one. Uh, there might be special situations where there's additional things that apply. Yep. Okay. So why don't we uh, why don't we start taking a look? Okay. So the first section is about trademarks, intellectual property, and brands. And some of these are are pretty obvious. You don't want to represent your skill as being something that was made by Amazon or that Amazon you know endorses outside of um, you living inside of the ecosystem. Um, and it also has to do with the you know copyright trademark of the content that you're presenting. And um, so if you have this great idea and you're wanting to take videos off of YouTube and, and and play them on your Echo Show devices, this is probably one of the guidelines that's going to come out and get you because there, 
there's lots of different content that's available on YouTube and it's still copyrighted unless it's explicitly open source. Um, you know, there are there could be old videos that are in the public domain or, or things like that uh, of content that's in the public domain that you could pull in and use. Um, and and kind of to there's two different ways to, to approach this. Like as, a, as an agency, when we're working with customers, then the skill, we create an account specifically for that, um, that company. And so everything is branded as that company. And so um, that kind of gives them like implied uh, consent that, you know, we're all doing this together. Um, if there's any right. doubt, then we, we have the client available to go ahead right. and, and, and give, to be give clear. some... Some, some written consent that we can do that. Go ahead. Right. And to be clear, since you're doing it for the company, this is an official skill of that company. Yes. You know, you're not, you're not uh, releasing something for, um, you know, the, uh, some other company and claiming it's official just by putting the word official on it. It doesn't make it official. Right. Um, or, you know, uh, putting something out there and pretending to be that company. That's a trademark violation. And that's what this is kind of specifically saying you can't do. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, it, it does say that if you are doing something from that company and it you know doesn't necessarily identify itself that way, there are steps that you can take to say, no, really, we have the copyright on this. We have the trademark on this. This is our intellectual property and we're certifying that. So, yeah. Or when you're submitting it in the testing instructions, you can give a link to something that would indicate that you've got permission from the copyright owners to be able to use their content in your, yep. in your skill. But again, you know, just for starters, this is pretty common sense, straightforward stuff. If you don't have the explicit rights to do it, you can't do it. That's just <laughs> kind of common sense. Yeah. I've seen people, you know, try to do that or I've seen people, do something and like call it unofficial and 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 so but there there's definitely cause because I've also seen skills being taken down where they've been identified especially this happened in the earlier days where we're doing a search and you know we're doing a project for a, a company and and there was a skill that's already named that out there that's obviously not and doesn't really have anything to to do with it they were kind mm -hmm. of squatting it was, it was fairly obvious that they were squatting with a fax skill or something like that that didn't really have anything to do with it. And we've seen those skills taken down. So right. um, on the, on the, the other hand, you know, there are certainly legitimate ways that you may be uh, working with, you know, with yeah. some other trademark thing. So if, for example, you said that it was, you know, compatible with Microsoft Outlook and you're not Microsoft, there are things that you can do, you know, that's still an okay thing. You just need to make clear that you're not Microsoft, but right. you're compatible with Microsoft. It's it's tough sometimes to play with trademarks, but uh, usually most of the time it, you're either on one side or the other of a, a pretty thick line. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting when you read these policies, they're from the guidelines of, your skill could be rejected or suspended at any time for. So when you read it, it's saying, um, if this is something that your skill does, then you could be rejected for that. So it's kind of an, inner, you have to make sure that, you know, that when you're reading these, it's not like saying, do this. It's like saying, if you do this, then you're going to be, yeah. um, you're in violation of the, of the guidelines. Okay, let's look at the next one. Child directed Alexa skills. So, so first of all, they kind of make clear that if you're aiming at, at at kids, at young kids, basically, you know, and and each country sets a different age for what a, a young kid is. So you need to make sure, you know, if you're aiming at that market, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, so if you're aiming at that market, you need to then make sure, for starters, that you're approved. Amazon only lets a child targeted skills for those who have gotten approval to do so. And that's, that's, I know on the Google side, that was a huge hurdle. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, and part, that's part of the, the questions that you ask for when you're uh, putting something into the skills store 
is, is this um, a child directed skill? Um, does it involve asking for, for payments or in skill purchasing? So there's just a number of things and, and there's more scrutiny, definitely more scrutiny if you, if you do a child directed skill. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's things like, are you selling digital products or services without mm -hmm. using in skill purchasing? Um, are you collecting personal information, which you're really not allowed to do? No, no, no. Yeah. You know, are you promoting stuff to, mm -hmm. to try to get people to do things outside of Alexa, which again, they don't want you to do. Um, and, you know, is it suitable for all ages? Not just is it suitable for young people, but there's kind of this notion of if you're, if you're making something that's suitable for everybody, you're more in the clear. Whereas if you're making something that seems obviously for young kids, if you're, you know, one, one could kind of, one could have tried to make an argument, for example, that, you know, the alphabet song is suitable for all ages. Yeah, that might be true, but it's also not meant for all ages. This is, you're, you made a kid's skill here. Yeah. Don't, you can't get around the rules. Um, and it, this is a tough one. Um, but also, actually, one of the things I want to point out is, although we're going over the rules with our read of them, we're not lawyers. True. We are also not on the Alexa review team. True. So, Alexa, you know, so, so if you have questions or if the review team challenges you on any of these points, you need to talk to lawyers and talk to the Alexa review team, not to us. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So we're we're giving our read from it from from you know our past experience doing these types of uh, skills and actions. In some case, personal experience with doing that type of thing. Like I, I did release one skill that was a kid's skill, and at some point in time, uh, because I wanted to do, do in skill purchasing and it wasn't allowed at that time for kids, then I then I was able to backtrack it out a little bit and make it more family oriented. And then I could add in skill purchasing, and you know, without all the additional uh, restrictions that um, that was around at that time. So um, <clears throat> sometimes that works, sometimes it can't. But you know, it's, it's, it's our own experience. We're not telling you that this is possible or not possible. So um, and maybe maybe we even say something that's completely wrong. I hope that's not true, but that could be possible. So as, uh, as we like to trust say, the guidelines. Yeah, as we like to say, your mileage may vary. <laughs> I'm thinking I may cut that and move it to the beginning. Okay. Or the end, but it may move out of this location, I think. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So so looking at the next one, the next one, I, I, I'm kind of amused. The, the child-directed one is one paragraph with about six <laughs> sub points in it. The next section is titled Health. It has six major six paragraphs one of which has about eight or nine bullet points in it yes which, and then a link to the requirements for skills that are HIPAA eligible right so there's you know plus there is more that you need to know about so it it it's it is a big deal this is something this is a differentiator um from from other platforms you know google didn't have this a, an environment where HIPAA compliant skills could run. And it's not just like the technical environment to run, but it's also the legal agreements and, and things in place um, so that skills like this could happen. And this has been years in the making. I remember starting a skill back in 2017 that would have fallen into this health category and um getting to a point where we've had to walk back some of the different things that we were going to do and even put the whole project on hold because the HIP environment wasn't ready yet. And then they were only letting a few skills in and now there's just slowly expanding it out to allow more opportunities. So this is a tough category. Um, I, I think it's a huge category. I think there's lots of uh, potential here, um, but this is something that that is a differentiator for Amazon and is something that has um, a lot of opportunities for skills to help people in this area. But because you're dealing with personal information, personal identifiable information and personal health information, 
There needs to be legal agreements in place. There needs to be protections on data. There's just, there's a number of things that have to happen. And this, this section goes through a whole bunch of them. I, I think also, though, it's important to note that even if you are not looking to collect personal information, even if, you know, you think you have, you know, you're, you, you've developed a skill because you want to teach people a great new way to, to do the Heimlich maneuver, for example, you still fall in this category and there are still restrictions that you have and you need to be extremely careful about them. So yeah. you, you yeah, can't true. just say, I've got a great new way to learn the Heimlich maneuver and I'm going to teach it to you by this skill. And, you know, the skill is called new life-saving skill. You just tripped over a whole bunch of regulations. Yeah, 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 true. And 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 I think you make a good point. There's kind of a spectrum. That there's there's stuff that's like health related that doesn't necessarily have personal identifiable information. There's some that kind of is more in the middle ground. Like uh, this this one thing that we were working on years ago were was scheduling an appointment at an urgent care, um, even though we weren't saying the person's name, the fact that they could tie a time and a location mm. was was enough that this was was something that had to be um, uh, be in the HIPAA environment. And then the, on the other side, you could be like, these are the drugs, the, you know, the medications that I'm taking, these are the, the health issues that I have, um, you know, physical therapy stuff. There's, there, so there's kind of a spectrum of what you've what you're dealing with and so you just need to really understand uh, this isn't something to gloss over lightly if you're going to tread in this water uh, you're going to you know scrutinize these points you're going to talk to people um you're going to see what's out there uh existing so there's right. there's just a lot of stuff that you, you need to do on this area no and you know i think you know and, and part of it is i mean i'm just looking at some of these rules some of these rules are more strict than ones that you'll see on app stores for example i mean the the very first restriction almost is you're not allowed to do something if it collects information regarding to any person's physical or mental health or condition. And, you know, beyond anything else, you've now just, you know, that's weight trackers. That's heart monitors. That's, that's yeah, there's a, a bunch. lot of stuff. So um, I'm just going to put a little plug in. So at Voice Summit, um, besides doing our um, live episode of Two Voice Devs, I will be giving a talk on um, a recent project that uh, has to do with reordering prescriptions. Oh, uh, via very Alexa. exciting. So so this fits very much in this area. Uh, depending on if we get some additional approvals and stuff, I might be able to talk specifically about the client that we did this with. If not, I will be talking generally about the topic. But these will be some of the things that we hit. Uh, we, we talk about, you know, when is data stored in the whole, you know, request recite, uh, response pipeline? What pieces of information do uh, customers slash patients have uh, control over on if they're stored or not? Uh, what protections are in place? Um, so we're going to be covering a lot from a technical slash developer perspective on reordering uh, prescriptions uh, via Alexa. So. So well, putting exciting. a plug in there, I'm if you're interested to in this topic, what? I said, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. So anything else we want to say about uh, health skills besides before you start treading down that road, think again. <laughs> um, it's also interesting. And the the, the, the link in here that they they have, there's actually a, a subset of Alexa features that are, are allowed to be used in HIPAA skills. So there's all kinds of things like send a phone and you know in skill purchasing and there's a whole bunch of you know the whole world of um, features that are available to Alexa um, is smaller when you're doing a HIPAA skill. Oh, that's and interesting. That will, that will be something else that we talk about are like what features can you do uh, in a HIPAA skill and which ones can't you do? Very interesting. Okay, so moving on, um, the next one is always it always starts bringing up important issues and that is the 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 show me the money limitations yeah, yes <laughs> at least one of them i think the, the next section after that on advertising is as well oh even so, so yes no, good point <laughs> so this section is about skill recommendations compensation and purchasing um so you cannot create a competing skill store 
and list skills in a skill store. Um, there is just one Alexa skill store, and and that's, you're not that's it. it. <laughs> and you're and you're not it. Yeah. Um, you can recommend skills if you're the developer of those skills, but you can't recommend other people's skills. Um, uh, so even if I, you know, even if I have a, like a, like have a list of skills or want to recommend, I don't know, they used to do web rings a long time ago at the oh, beginning yeah. of the internet. This would, this is to be the thing that's stopping those types of skills where you could say, Hey, uh, you know, because people could pay into, a, a ring and say, um, you know, at the end of your my skill, I'm going to recommend your skill. And then uh, that one, you're going to recommend some other skill and and have or, it go through, but, right, you can't, or, but you can't do that. Or, you know, have a, a, uh, a daily routine skill that says, you know, hey, take a look at this other skill yeah. um, and receive compensation for doing so because you're not allowed to do that, but Amazon is. Yes. So exactly. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's also it also includes things like uh, you can't directly solicit donations in a lot of ways. Um, you know, but if if you do, you need to be able to you you know if you want to do that for a charity, you need to be able to go through the Alexa donations with Amazon Pay program. Um, yeah, and I haven't seen that lately, but I I used to track that because that was definitely that was an area that I was interested in. That there used to be, I don't know, I think at one point, like 200 different skills that you could just ask, you know, the one one party experience, like make a donation to, you know, what name of your charity. And um, and by being involved in that process, then you could do that. And I would like to see this be able to expand out more to more um, uh, charities and be able to, I, I think that's that's an undertapped um, potential for, mm. for skills would be for. Uh, donations because you could you could like be attending an event and you could just say you know make a donation to whatever your company is and then maybe that would also install a routine um where then you could you know have additional information about the charity that you're doing and you know track track whatever it is like uh, animals saved or forests you know trees planted or whatever you know whatever it is that that you're doing your charity about that so I think there's more that could happen in this area, but it, it is somewhat limited for donations. Um, it also doesn't allow it also doesn't allow you to say things like you know, uh, hey, in order to to boost uh, to get up to the next level, you need to give me a positive review on the the skill store. Now I think part of this was actually added later. There was a big hubbub a number of years ago. Oh, I forgot about that. That's yeah, right. Where people were like. It was making it sound like, you know, to keep this skill free, uh, give us a five-star review. And so um, it made it sound like you had to leave, you know, leave a five-star review. And so there was some abuse um, in that, in the wording. And so uh, they've added some additional. I had totally forgotten about that, that that was a big, big discussion at the, uh, at the Chattanooga conference a couple of years back. Yeah, it was. I had forgotten about that. So, and, you know, then it also says, look, yes, you're allowed to do in-skill purchasing and you're allowed to charge for the skill and, and you're allowed to do other stuff, but you're limited in how you do that. And mostly it means you need to go through the tools that we let that we've given you to do those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not like you can can say like just go go on go on over to this uh, website and you know or or read out your credit card now and yeah or you know send send a link and it's going to go ahead and uh, you know the link is going to you know, take you to a donation page or right. you know, so there's 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 certain things that you you, you can't do but uh, they have expanded quite a bit the features of in-skill purchasing. So you've got your one-time purchases, you have your consumables, you have your subscriptions. You even have paid skills where you can just say, I'm gonna pay X dollars and now I've bought this skill and I can use it for free. And there's even just recently, um, it, was, it was talked about at Alexa Live, is the ability to set discounts that you can say, during this time period, I'm going to run a discount or like a promo where you can get 
get it for you know X percent off. And and so you have more control uh, and it makes it easier for a developer to define those things as opposed to going in and having to manually change the prices and then go through certification again and then manually change the prices again uh, back. So there's there's a number of things in, inside there to, to to look at. Plus the new um, developer features that they're they're increasing the payout for for developers um, up to yes, but interesting to note that that's not actually mentioned in here anywhere. But, it is not. But but that makes sense because it's not a restriction or anything. It's not. Yeah. Um, it's not a reason why your skill may not be approved. It's it's kind of a separate program. It's kind of a carrot and a stick. This is kind of the stick. If you do <laughs> these things, then you will be kicked out. And then the kind of the promotion stuff like, oh, now you can get not only 70, but 80, and maybe sometimes 90% of your um, uh, in-skill purchasing. Um, that's kind of the carrot part, so. Okay. and. Uh, again, with the Karen and stick, we've got, as you said, the advertising section. Um, and it it kind of boils down to no advertising. Yes. So, you know, I haven't even, I haven't done a flash briefing in a while, so I'm not even sure what the current status is, but you could do advertising in flash briefings and you could mention your other skills inside of your skill, but that is the limitation of advertising. Yeah, and, and even then it's kind of restricted. So for example, your advertising can't use Alexa's voice or any any Amazon Poly voice or similar voices. You can't refer to Alexa. You can't imitate it. You have to yeah. make it, it has to actually sound different than Alexa itself. Yeah, um, the way that I've seen this get by would be like a quiz thing and like, and this quiz has been sponsored by blah, blah, blah. And so I've seen that. That's been something that uh, the, that I've seen pass through. Like the I, I, the big one that I remember was like the, um, oh, is it the wait, wait, don't tell me, you know, that yeah. show, the, the wait, wait quiz um, at the end would say, would have like some car manufacturer or something like this. Like today's quiz was sponsored by, but it was the, you know, the, the host, the host, voice. not Alexa, right? Yeah. Um, Plus, on advertising, there is new features for Echo Show that's coming out, where you can define an image and some some blurb, and across your Echo screen um, would be advertising that would relate to your skill, and then you could tap the screen and and start your um, uh, start your skill experience. So that's that kind of falls under this advertising uh, side of things. Something else that doesn't isn't necessarily covered by this, but works is quick links, where you could have quick links set up in social media posts where they click it and then the skill is enabled and started. Um, that's not and, a violation of this policy. Right. Well, and again, that's that's coming from the other direction. That's advertising your skill elsewhere. Yeah. And we have literally been talking about quick links for 113 episodes. So. <laughs> We have. We have. It was our very first topic. Very, um, also, and, and kind of makes sense, is even if you do have advertising that is otherwise allowed, they still reserve the right to reject it if you're promote, you know, if the advertising is misleading or it's confusing or it makes for an unpleasant skill or it's inappropriate or anything along those lines. So, which, which, these, yeah, ahead. the next three categories. I was going to say, which, which leads into inappropriate stuff. <laughs> things that would be considered inappropriate. Um, so, one blurb, one sentence blurb about uh, sexually explicit content and pornography um, images. Um, so, there's uh, that's something that's definitely going to get you kicked out, as well as explicit uh, graphic violence, uh, descriptions of gore. Um, they specifically call out decapitation, unsettling content, excessive violence, or that promotes crime, organized crime, terrorism, illegal activities, or undermining local and national governments or police. So a lot of carefully worded stuff there. I think one of the things that's interesting to note is they, they do explicitly call out pictures 
but also they make it clear your audio content can't violate these policies. You know, yes. so so don't think you can skirt around it just by playing audio that depicts decapitations. Yeah, I'm I'm getting uncomfortable with this this line, but anyway, um, so again. This is kind of common sense. You need to keep your material for pretty general consumption. Now, there are um, music that's on Amazon Music that have explicit lyrics, but that's different than having like, like that same video or audio track playing inside of a skill. So, um, you know, so be be aware of that. Um, so. That's how we've gotten halfway through it. Um, uh, what 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 do you think that we uh, we haven't overloaded this? We'll we'll continue this one another time. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think this is kind of a you know a good stopping point. Um, so there's going to be you know additional topics. Just kind of give you a, a quick preview. Uh, next topics are going to include uh, things with re religion, ethnicity, and culture, emergency services, additional content. Um, web search, financial skills, um, and invocation name requirements. So those are kind of the things that we're going to talk about uh, in a future episode. Um, but I think we've gotten a good overview of some of those uh, things to think about when you're creating skills and, and reasons why a skill may not pass certification yep. um, if these guidelines are violated. So we would love to hear your experiences with reviews and certifications. We know everybody has them. <laughs> um, but I think it's important that we we share those experiences. You can share them on uh, you know social media, share them with us directly, or just post your experiences, Twitter, um, on LinkedIn. Uh, we do look at the Alexa Slack channels, um, so we're we're happy to to pick up stuff from there, and we certainly look forward to talking about them more on another episode of Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Take care, Alan. Take care, Mark. <laughs>